Please welcome as our first non-MSW guest, Josh Nichols. Hello. Hello. Uh, Josh, the only, actually, the only thing I know about Josh really is that he has a place in Orange County called Spectacles Improv. Yeah, Spectacles Improv Engine in uh, Fullerton. What is that? In Fullerton, California. In Fullerton, California. Yeah, yeah. All right. And what's that all about? Uh, it's uh, What's going local- on out there? <laughs> uh, uh, it's my local theater, uh, and we're about fifty percent short form, long form, and uh, we started. We, we'll celebrate ten years in December that we've been around, but we've been growing and like a snowball downhill and loving it. Yeah, that's great. Ten, t- ten years. Yeah, you're mixing short form and long form. Yeah, yeah. We started as a short form one team, and it just did really well. Uh, and then we added more short form teams, and then we're like, we want to push the boundaries a little bit. So I came out to L.A., got some training at Acme, oddly enough, which is where this is being recorded, a satellite of Acme. Um, got some training there and loved it and brought that all back to my company and then just kept always seeking out more training everywhere I could and kept bringing that back. And as I did that, we kept expanding th- what we would do, uh, what kind of shows we would do, what kind of performances. How are like, the crowds? Like, I remember like when I came from Chicago, when I first got to L.A., like <clears throat> the crowd wasn't that hip yet really (laughs) i mean it was was before the ucb before the io really had a space yeah uh second city was barely present out here so it was really just like the 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 groundlings yes uh and there was no real audience i mean basically you you, you, when you played you you were playing people were like why aren't they doing stand-up yeah yeah no we still do that yeah all the time i'll be like oh i'm on an improv team and they'll be like oh you do stand-up it's like who does stand-up in a team right (laughs) Like the <clears throat> blue collar comedy tour or something. Oh. It's like, what do you think I do? <laughs> Abbott and Costello. Yeah. That's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm confused by that too. Our audience is like definitely our short form teams pull more. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but we are building. I think when you realize uh, who supports long form, it's mostly the community of people that love improv. It's not at this point, and I want that to change. But at this point, uh, it's not like, oh, what do you want to do tonight, honey? Let's go see a Herald. You know, right. Um, And that's certainly not true in Orange County. I've sort of noticed a little bit in the L.A. market, too. You know, Uh, that's it's uh, that's where it's at. And I don't I don't think it should always be that way. But we have to fight that. Can't just accept it. No, I think that's great, actually, because like when when I started in Chicago, there there wasn't a a, a big community, but we we built one. Yeah. Uh, And then it became like Chicago is now Mecca, basically. Yeah. And you, you play there. Like you know, I play at the IO. If I play at the IO there nowadays, like the audience there laughs at mistakes. Yeah, I mean they're that hip. There's like they 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 laugh at formal mistakes. Like oh, that was that was a late edit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I remember when I came out here, like that wasn't the case. And all of a sudden, it was like, oh shit, I got to earn my laughs again. Yeah, because you. And, but th- I thought that was a, that was a good thing. Sure. Because actually, because you got spoiled in Chicago because they were so generous. Yeah, it's like sometimes. You, you got to play in front of some dicks to actually, okay, all right, I'll 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 earn it. You're right. Yeah. I got to earn my laugh. You have to, I mean, I think stand-ups run into this a lot. When they just perform for other stand-ups, they get good at making other stand-ups laugh. And, <laughs> you know, and I think the same thing can happen in improv, too. When you're, is, is there a place where stand-ups just play for other stand-ups? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> yes. Uh, like, it's, in Orange County, there's a really strong stand-up scene. And, like, I've, you know, like, gone in there and be like, oh, what's this all about? And it's literally just other stand-ups watching other stand-ups like while they're on their phone doing their set waiting for their time to do their set oh that just sounds so sad it i don't look there's like stand-ups have a really like anti-improv thing and i'm not going to start a flame war on the internet so uh wait a minute what (laughs) stand-up said what about improv yeah Yeah. oh all of them you need a group of people to be funny you know the uh stuff like that uh I just stay above it. I think we're all like it's a different form of theater to me. Um, but yeah, th- th- it's I've been in there and I'm like, this is I can tell why some of these people are suicidal. You know, like one guy went up there. He's like, he's like one guy went up. He's like, I have a whole set prepared, but screw that. He's like, do you ever feel like you're in a movie watching your own life? And I'm like, this is disassociative. <laughs> this is this is a psychological issue. And if he sprayed us with bullets, it'd be our fault for still being here. You know what I mean? Like we should right. leave. <laughs> he's told us every sign we need to know he's not safe, and we're still here waiting for our five minutes. <laughs> That's how we will we will tempt that fate for our five minutes. I was telling you, stand up is so different. Uh, it is. It's just completely different. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's. I, I see it. As, I know it can be done a lot of different ways, but I see it as an act that is crafted. Yeah. 
right? And they, like I, I guess I always see it sort of as like Carlin, like you know, his act was so perfect. Sure. So you could see him do the same act twice, and it would be perfect. And to me, I like I think that's what I think most stand-ups probably in a way aspire to. Uh, but there's so many different kinds of stand-up. But th- the thing with me is like it's you're alone. That's my problem. I tried to do uh, actually I did it a few times in Chicago about. I don't know. Oh, shit, I'm old. About 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, where I did one person improv. Uh, and it, it hadn't really be, been done. Sure. Uh, and I remember, like, the first two times I did it, it just sucked. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the show sucked. It was just terrible. I didn't know how to do it. Uh, but by the third and fourth time, I, I figured out how to play all. Cause I wasn't doing, like, a here's my life sort of show. I was doing, like, a multiple character, multiple scene, long yeah. form. Uh, and, and the. Second, third times I did it, it was it was, it was actually good. It, it worked. I remember coming off the last one I did. Cause I was only doing it because I was supposed to do a two-person show, and the guy I was supposed to play with didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, all right, we had, because we were getting good houses, so I got a full house. So you know, <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm going to try this. Uh, and w- when it worked, I came off stage. And it was like it was the emptiest feeling in the world to me. Yeah. I was like, I have no one. I mean, I know the audience enjoyed it. But I didn't really enjoy it because I didn't have anyone to share it with. Yeah, and, and and that's when I realized like I'd never I never really wanted to try stand up just because I, I I just imagine that being my entire life coming off stage being like I'm alone. It's a lonely it's a lonely thing, you know. And and everyone you talk to, it's just purely competing with you. There's not like a ton of support. And I think one of the best parts about improv can be when you're with a group of people that you love and there's a community and there's a lot of support and you're all working towards something together. That's honestly. Uh, I wouldn't be doing it if that didn't exist in it. That's that's a huge part of it. Oh yeah, that I mean that's to me the most rewarding part about because there's no money. Yeah. No, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's no money in doing it, but just as yeah. the the people you meet, uh, even you know, students, friends. I mean, my improv friends are lifelong friends. Yeah. Uh, they're also I was I was I also enjoy the fact that like I haven't met many improvisers that you know are any good basically. Who I don't mind having a conversation with, who I wouldn't enjoy having a, a conversation yeah. with, who aren't basic, who, who aren't dicks. We sort them out. They they get filtered out, you know. Or they get better. Yeah, <laughs> that's I mean, true. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm saying I, I, yeah. I, I've seen improv turn you know people who are basically assholes into decent people. You're looking at one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're absolutely looking at one. I used to be a total dick, and now like I not can I curse? I imagine I can. But yeah, like uh, I used to just not be empathetic and not check in with other people is all about my own thing. And now all the time I'm like, Oh, maybe I'll, okay, I'll go do this thing. I don't want to do just because people are doing it, you know? And I usually am rewarded for that. And so I was, I was just, I was just talking to someone about the, about them being a dick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and what, what I was in, in talking to them and I was talking like, I remember when I was a dick basically. Yeah. Uh, and it's, 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 it wasn't pleasant to sit there and re- I mean, it, it was useful. Like I was trying to help someone, but I'm just like, oh man. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was a dick, it was, it was unpleasant. It was, uh, it was, it was my own fault. And why are you making me remember this to help you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it does, I mean, it's, it's so wonderful. I remember one of the first things I learned as a student was I, I was in a scene, I think with Esther Joyce Peters at the annoyance we 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 were doing some scene where I just realized like I was saying things that I thought were like cool to say, mm-hmm. and I ultimately just lost like I wouldn't see it this way now, but I lost that scene in the sense that like I was trying to be a guy who was right, and I was just fucking wrong. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I'm I'm a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a sexist dick. Uh. But that's a great thing about improv. It's like if, if, you know, if, if you're open to it, you know, you, you, you put yourself out there, you, you have an honest reaction, yeah. and that's you. Yeah. And if you is a dick, yeah. what's great about improv is, too is, is, is you, you can also lie. Be like, oh, I, I just made that up. Yeah, that yeah that's a character. That wasn't me. I was me pretending. S- saw him on the street today. Is trying gonna, something new. I'm going to go home and cry for a while <laughs> about what a dick I am. The other cool thing is none, like your dick years of improv, there's no tape of this, right? So, like th- these things go away. No, like, but I'm doing a great job just telling people, like, yeah. "Yeah, I was a dick." <laughs> There's no proof of this anywhere except me here telling you. Yeah, but it's a sweet nostalgia at this point, you know. Like you probably not finding the people that are upset about it. I wonder if almost 
uh, it's probably just me. It, it, it wasn't just me. I'm sure it's a lot of players, but it seems like as I think about it, when you go through improv, you you stink. Sure. Probably a lot of people, we stink, and then we get better. <laughs> uh, I mean, I stunk when I started. I, I sucked for a good four years. Uh, but then you get better, and then eventually you're good. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like, hey, maybe I can be a dick a little bit. <laughs> uh, You've earned it. It's like, hey, maybe I've earned being a dick a little bit. Uh, yeah. And then you, you're a dick for a while, and then you realize, oh, shit, I'm a dick. <laughs> And then, well, I, th I think that's kind of a, and then basically your, your, your work probably sucks because no one wants to fucking play with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you get better. It's like, okay, I, I've learned not to do that again. Uh, but I, I wonder if that, like, have you had that experience? Like, well, like you, you, that you got to a place where, like, I'm so good, I get to be a dick a little bit. It's so, it's, this is such a funny thing. Like, first of all, I just want to explain, like, when I started, I thought I was good. Like, it's the whole opposite. Like, because I did short form and, like, I came out with a bench in my head and everyone laughed. And I'm, oh, you know, I'm so fucking good at this. Uh, but then I realized. That's a great move. Yeah, yeah. The old bench bit. I still pull it out on the fest circuit. But yeah, like, uh, like, I realized now, oh my God, I was so horrible. But I was, thought I was brave about it. But, like, I, I fight with this all the time because I have, there are certain things I am a, definitely braggadocious about, but I have like crippling humility when it comes to the improv world just because there's people like you there's people that have gone before me put so much time and effort in and they have their name on projects that are just landmark landmark events in improv history right uh even that is a young art but i know they exist so i feel like i can't be a dick but then there's people that believe in me that say don't do that don't undercut who you are because i believe in you and then like it's it's like a weird thing where i'm like do i do i stop like this humility, can I f stop who I am about this? That's what ultimately I think kind kind of gets you. Well, it's it's, it's the students. Yeah. Uh, when you realize it's like, oh, these like like I remember when I, when I first started teaching, I didn't know how to teach. Yeah. So I, I wasn't a very good teacher. I had a lot to say, but not much to explain. <laughs> right. I, just, I I I knew a lot, but couldn't say a lot. Yeah. Uh. And it took me years to, to figure out how to, how to say some things. And then it became about how much I knew. Hey, look how much I know. I'm probably in that phase. I know so much. <laughs> right? Yeah. And what, what, what eventually was a, the best les lesson was like, oh, it doesn't matter how much I know. All that matters is that I give a shit about the person I'm talking to. Yes. Yes. Uh, they don't care what you know till they know that you care. That's... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter what, what, what doesn't, I think it, what you know is useless yeah. except for what you can get them to understand. Oh, sure. So, I mean, so, I mean, basically, then you, you, know, you start, that's when teaching to me gets real rewarding. It's just like when you see, like, it's like, it's not that I know so much, it's that, hey, I saw this person take that step. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah. Uh, no, no matter how small, because I've taken it. Because I get, I didn't speak in the first two shows I did. Uh, I stood in the back line. Took I'm gonna do that tonight. <laughs> you know what? In our two man, I'm just not gonna speak. Uh, all right, that would, that, would, <laughs> that would make me have to work a lot, <laughs> or I could choose not to speak as well. Yeah. well just, uh, and we could do a half hour right. silent piece, uh, which the audience would just adore. We yeah, just landmark night. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Keep going. Yeah. You have kids? Yeah, I do. How I'm many? A 12 and a 4, both girls. And oh. um, yeah, eight years apart because I don't practice safe sex. Because <laughs> you don't practice safe I, sex? Uh, don't, I'd rather have a kid than wear a condom. And I've been in a monogamous <laughs> relationship. So what's occurred from that is I've had two kids. <laughs> so they weren't planned. <laughs> no, no, it's planned. There's my wife just totally. That's not rouge. That's blush. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I just didn't plan any kid. They just happened. But I love them. I'm glad there were awesome mistakes. It's funny because you, you say that now I feel terrible about having planned with my children. <laughs> it's like, oh, I planned my children. You're, you're in the it's special like minority. Robots. I think the whole world is unplanned kids. Like, there's the people that fight and go to, like, doctors and stuff to have kids. You know what I mean? Those are the people that really want them. Right. You, <laughs> no, I, I, it wasn't like I, I had to do that. But, you know, I was, all right, yeah. me and my wife discussed it. <laughs> and then you know we decided at a certain point in our life we would like to have a child and so yeah. and so you know we stopped using protection and you know th then there's there that 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 pressured pregnancy sex sure there was it it was more like mechan it was like it served a purpose and not just like a good time part of it's great yeah 
<laughs> just because, I mean, forced forced sex to make a baby is kind of like guy dream sex. Okay. <laughs> in, a, in in this way, because like. <laughs> Uh, all ears, well, man. It, I guess. Well, no, it, it, it's just like because the woman at that point is like, "Look, I'm ovulating. We need to do this now sure. to get this done." So it, she's not concerned at all about her pleasure. She's just like, "Get it in there, shoot the load, let's get shit done." And so basically, you're just pumping and shooting, yeah, yeah. right? Which is just like, "Hey, that's all I want to fucking do most of the time." Yeah. Now I need romance. Like, right? it's <laughs> like really, I, I get to do this. Uh, <laughs> it's a trick. <laughs> Which, I mean, of, of course, sex is much better when you care about the person. And yeah, yeah, it's, uh-huh. it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, of course you care about sure, the, yeah. the woman you're trying to impregnate, but I'm thinking it's when, when you take the time to take care of each other and all that. But you, you get the point I'm making, which is like, yes. hey, all I'm supposed to do is pump and squirt. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> that's fun, like, that's fun, like, the first couple times yeah. that week. <laughs> and then it's like, really? Four, five, six times? Like I don't know that then I'm doing anything in, at right? this point. Yeah, then then, then it's, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. It's like it's no. Well, I don't know about you. After I have a, I mean, I can't screw every day. All day long. All day long. No, really? I'm just kidding. I'm check, <laughs> I will check you real fast with your wife. Out. She's she's shaking her head like nope, no. Yeah, I, I have a uh, an eight year old daughter and a four year old son. Yeah. Uh, and there, I mean, I was I was. Th- Kids are. I, I was thinking about you know. Kids are hard as far as just like it's. What I was thinking is like is uh, the rewards are high, the price is high. Sure. Uh, it's like it's like man, it's it's fucking hard. But then it's this is someone else. Someone told me there's another expression like all work and no joy. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's 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 horrible. That that is not the expression. I just fucked up that expression. It's it's, it's all joy and no fun, is the expression. Which is another one that seems to be like, yeah, it is that's, joy, yeah, but yeah, it is yeah. no fun. It's paradoxical. Yeah, definitely. It's true. Yeah. yeah. And bringing that back to improv, <laughs> when you make babies, they will grow up to be improvisers. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I brought that back seamlessly. Yeah, perfect. What that's a Jay Leno S segue. <laughs> <laughs> totally smoothly. Yeah. Uh so I how's uh how many Shows you got a week out there? How many classes? Is it going good? Yeah, we just started. Uh, we've been doing a drop-in now for three years. And a guy in the audience was at our very first drop-in ever. Um, there you go. And then uh, we just now are about to launch our training program. It took three years of building it. And we're just about to start October 10th. And, they, yeah, it's going really well. We, I'm always nervous. It's, there's, a, there's a certain hubris in saying, oh, I could teach. And I could make people pay me this amount of money for this. And it took me a long time, again, the humility to get over that. You know, right. so uh, when people when we opened up and in three days we had like fourteen signups. I went, okay, you know, like these people believe in me, so I feel good about it. So that's what that's starting, and we do shows from Thursday through Saturday, and usually three or four shows a night, sometimes two. You know, um, depending on when we get. Are you night. there all the time? I'm there a lot, and that's a really good question mm-hmm. because I have to find a way to live outside of there it's so i mean it's it's so hard yes i'm just i'm gonna check in with your wife real quick oh no no we deal with this your wife no because it's just because like my wife works full time uh luckily from home she's able to do that but she has a a legit job i always say that like my job's not legit yeah i know yeah i teach improvisation i do i do shows but you know we both know that it's a ton of work to try and put a theater together yes uh <clears throat> but I can't be here all the time. Like I, I, I wish I could be here. I mean, there was a, like when I helped open the I.O. in Chicago. Yeah, I was there seventy hours a week. Uh, that ain't gonna happen nowadays. No, it's uh, not fair to them. <clears throat> no. Yeah, I know. It's, I get the same thing. Like I heard Mamet say once, and I'm sure it's a colloquialism, but he said like the boot of the farmer is the best fertilizer, and I feel like I'm the farmer, right? And uh, so when I'm not there. Like there's a worry and a concern. I have tons, tons of people I trust, you know. But I am always, when you run something, you are you work twenty four seven. Your brain is thinking about it all the time. Actually, and, I'm, I'm I'm I feel pretty lucky here because like I, I'm only down here actually. I like I teach on Monday nights. Yeah. And I, I take care of this night a bit, uh, and I do this. Yeah. Uh, but I have you know good people. You really do. Uh. Who work with me and take care? I mean, it's oh yeah. If 
I mean, I have no real advice for you because you actually your theater's been open longer. <laughs> uh, I'm no, but <clears throat> you you've been around some very successful operations and seen how I'm nothing but ready to accept tons of advice. Oh uh, no, yeah, yeah. You got to let other people do what they do well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let people, and it's it, it's amazing how many. Uh, like here, like there's, I I've almost never had to ask for help. It's it's offered by people who care, uh, and it's even it's even hard for me to accept it. And it's like, wait a minute, you just want to come hang out and help again? Yeah. I, I can't ask you to do that. That's <laughs> that's that's just wrong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Even even though they want to. Yeah. Uh, and I have to remember back when I wanted to. Yeah. Right. There was a time when I would have I would have done anything for you know the I.O. when I started at it. I mean, I, I remember I mean when they were just a traveling bar theater, uh, and I was at every class I could take. Every night there was a, any night there was a show, I was there early. I stuck out late. Uh, I would have done anything for that place, and I have to I, I have to accept that people can be like that. Yeah. And I mean, and I would say. It's, I mean, I, I I struggle with that, but I would say let them let them help. Yeah, because they want to help. I yeah, thank you. Yeah, I I have some great people. It is like, uh, it is it, like I've often been rewarded by trusting them. So yeah, yeah. Just don't get dicked over by someone. <laughs> I hear all this time. Uh, um, I, why can't I remember his name? The guy that founded the Groundlings. He talks about how he Grounder. made. Paul Grounder. I, yeah, Paul Grounder. Yeah. I, no, I, I have no idea. I should who, totally know his name. No, I've never studied with no him, idea. but I should totally know his name. Actually, I, I got called out last week. I, I didn't know where the Groundlings came from. It was an email to, I think, people who work who I, I work with. I was like, like I have no idea what, why the Groundlings are named the Groundlings. And almost everyone's, it's a Shakespearean yeah. thing. People that you send the cheap seats. moron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, all right, I didn't know at the ground. I guess that's where that comes from. But I'm yeah. sorry. Probably oh, yeah, no problem. I had to make that same discovery. Gary something. Anyway, um, he made the Groundlings a nonprofit, and they voted him out. So the guy that started the Groundlings, which came from the committee, right, uh, with Dell started in San Francisco, right? Did it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they started a committee in L.A., and then it kind of didn't happen. And uh, he started the Groundlings from that, from the, the ghost of that. And... Eventually made it but a nonprofit. That was Dell. Yeah, yeah. Was Dell involved in that? Yeah, Dell was involved in the committee. On oh, the committee, I know, but I yeah. didn't know he was involved in the Groundlings. At no, all. no, 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 no. Uh, no, but they someone else from a yes, committee. Yes, someone from the committee. All right, Gary. God, I wish you remember. This is a bad history. Uh, look, there's a great documentary coming out about it. Check it out. Um, anyway, um, you have failed. I. What I've, is the history? I have let, of the I have led whoever booked me. On. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> sorry, but no. Uh, he got voted out, and he no longer owns any part of that, you know. So people did. A, it was his baby, you know. And he, had, right? Oh, Gary Austin, thank you so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Gary Austin, and he does improv training and stuff all around. You could, yeah. So that's that's what happened. So like, I not that I worry about that, but so don't make your theater non for profit. You, you could get voted out. You, you will get voted out. No, he could have justifiably been voted out. I'm not there. He could have been a maniac. Who it's knows? Because we're not we're not a non for profit. Yeah, but we are. <laughs> are, are you worried now? Oh, you don't like, make any profit. Yeah, that's, that's, de facto, that's, that's not a lot of profit. <laughs> yeah, not it's by like, choice. So pretty much a non. for Apparently, like we could easily be a non for profit. Yeah, well, I, I never understood that really. I mean, I'm sure it's 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 simple, and I'm just being stupid right now but it's the non-for-profit businesses that make millions and stuff like that i was like i don't well, know what that is they don't have as much of tax burden or other things that are required they get breaks and you know but i, I mean I, I just think it's a bad use of the language yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh yes it's a yeah. non-for-profit business where there's yeah. enormous profits yes yes it is a profit decision to be a non-for-profit it is like <laughs> it is uh, yeah uh i, we, I that's mean, why i don't agree with politics I uh, in I, general, all politics. I do, I think a coven of witches should choose a baby king, and then we should never <laughs> worry about it. I just never ever. I I purposely saw. I do not care about politics at all. It has been such a healthy move in my life. Uh, it's one of the like. Uh, I'm not a religious guy, but the whole God grant me the serenity to to accept the things I can't change and the wisdom to know the difference. I have the wisdom to know that I have no effect on politics, so I've chosen just to focus on improv and family. And my life has been amazing since that. Decision. But what if right now, in one statement, you could affect real change in America? 
I would want America to know that improv is not stand-up. That's the only... <laughs> that is the only change I'd want to make. All right, I think that's perfect. Let's wrap it there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so All much, right, Josh Miles. Nichols, everyone. Hey. <laughs>